Hi there and welcome to a new Photoshop tutorial on my channel. Before going any further, I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel over the last couple of months. The sub count has been growing beyond my imagination and I really appreciate your support guys. Special thanks to those of you who are generous enough to be a part of my Patreon. I'm still learning as I create these videos so I'm really grateful for the trust you put in me. That being said, if you're into making digital art, motion graphics, visual effects, or simply enjoy making videos, make sure you subscribe and stick around as I have a couple of really fun projects lined up for the future. And today we're gonna be turning a bunch of stock images into this volcano scene. As always, you'll find all the original photos in the description. And if you're interested in the project source files, you can find them on my Patreon page, whereby paying a small fee, you get access to every single one of my existing photo manipulation projects, as well as the upcoming ones. Let's go ahead and create a new document in Photoshop. You can set any dimension you want, but I'm going with 2000 by 2500 as usual. First, I will bring in this mountain image, uh, rename it, and using the marquee tool, I will draw a rectangle inside the image right around the top here. Rasterize the layer and press Ctrl T. This way, I can control the selection independently and extend the sky towards the top. I also want to erase the trees, so let's add a vector mask and use the eraser tool to remove some of the greenery around the bottom here. Uh, I also want to make the mountain look less lively by adding a hue saturation layer, create a clipping mask and simply desaturate both greens and yellows. Now that we're done with the mountain, let's go ahead and bring in the volcano cloud image, scale it up rename it to something descriptive. Now let's go ahead and add a vector mask and use the eraser tool to mask out the sky around the smoke. You can increase the eraser hardness closer to the edges so you can preserve details. And to blend it well with the mountains, I'm including the tip of the volcano here. So it starts with the rocky gray volcano mountain on top and fades softly to the original mountain towards the center. Now I also want to match the color and exposure so let's add an exposure layer, create a clipping mask and play around with the exposure to match it back to the scene. Now let's add a hue and saturation layer and add in a blue tint. Cool, looks good. Since this is a volcano I think it would be cool to add a bit of a fiery look on the smoke closer to the mountain tip here. So let's create a hue and saturation layer, enable colorize and change the hue to orange. Now select the mask and press Ctrl I to invert. Make sure the foreground color is set to white and now simply use a low opacity brush to paint on the bright areas of the smoke here. And once you're done, just change the layers blend mode to lighten. Now if you notice, based on the existing shadows on the mountain, the sun is on the right side. So let's go ahead and create this smoke shadow. And to do that, let's duplicate the smoke layer. You can do that by pressing Ctrl J, convert it to a smart object and simply rotate it and stretch it out. You can also erase around the edges to make sure the shadow is casting on the mountain only. Now bring the opacity down and you can also fade the edges a bit more by adding a Gaussian blur. Now that we're done with the shadows, let's go ahead and add lava on top of the mountain. I already have the right image for that and since the background is solid black, I can just change the blend mode to screen and that's gonna instantly get rid of the black background. Now just match the lava scale to the mountain. Let's go ahead and add a vector mask and simply use the eraser to blend the edges with the volcano cloud as well as the mountain. Now we're pretty much done with the volcano part of the scene and since the bottom half is meant to be a clear reflective lake with nothing much going on on the water surface, we can go ahead and work on the reflections straight away. So first let's group all layers in one folder, duplicate the group, Right click and choose merge group, next go to edit, transform and click on flip vertical. It doesn't have to retain the exact same scale so I'll go ahead and reduce the height. Now we need to make it look a bit more like an actual reflection. 
So first thing I want to do is add motion blur, change the angle to 90 degrees and bump up the distance. All right, nice. And it already looks much better, but I still want to make this a bit more believable. So let's go ahead and add a wave filter. You can simply copy my settings here, but I recommend that you play around with these values depending on what kind of water surface you want to achieve. And once applied, you can see that the small waves make it look really like a lake now. And if you still see the waves on both sides here, just simply go ahead and increase the reflections width slightly. Lastly, let's go ahead and add a hue saturation layer and desaturate the reflection a bit. It definitely looks much more realistic now. The only issue that remains here is where both the mountain and the lake meet. It just doesn't look natural at all. In reality, there should be a shore right in between. So let's go ahead and add that. I already have the perfect photo for that. So let's bring it in, rename it to shore, add a victor mask, and I'm gonna erase everything around the tree line. And maybe I'll leave a bit of the ground as well. The colors are still off so let's add some curves and brighten things up. Next I'll add levels and adjust the output values. And now the landscape composition makes much more sense. Now that I'm looking at the scene so far I'm thinking the sky shouldn't be as vibrant. We have a huge volcano cloud going on here. So let's desaturate and darken that area a little bit. You can do the same thing around the bottom if you want since this is supposed to be a reflection of the sky. Great, now let's go ahead and emphasize on the eruption itself by adding a bit of glow around the volcano tip. So create a new layer, I'm gonna call it glow, set the color to a bright orange and using a low opacity soft brush, simply paint around the top here and let's change the blend mode to linear light. If you feel like the color is still off, you can always press Ctrl U and readjust the hue. All right, I'm happy with the color, but I wanna bring the opacity down a bit. And of course, let's not forget to duplicate this into a new layer to mirror the glow on the lake as well. And I guess you can bring the opacity down even more for this one. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's focus on the foreground. What I'm gonna do is bring in this lake photo, rename it to branch. First, let's use the stamp tool to remove this person's feet as well as his reflection since we will be placing a completely different person in here later on. Next, add a vector mask to the layer and simply erase everything around the branch. You can obviously combine other masking tools as well such as the magic wand tool. I personally like using the eraser for situations like this but it really depends on the image as well as your preference. If you end up erasing parts of the branch by mistake, you can always switch over to the brush tool and bring those parts back. And I think we're ready now to bring in our subject to our image here. And for the sake of this context, I'm gonna call him Hiker. So let's rename the layer to that. And to mask the background out, simply go to Select, Subject, and this will automatically draw a mask around the guy. Now add a vector mask, and you can always use the magic wand and other masking tools to refine the edges. And now we're able to properly resize and reposition the Hiker on the branch. And because there's this volcano glow right in front of him, let's go ahead and add some highlights. To do that, create a hue and saturation layer, enable colorize and change the hue to orange and bring both saturation and brightness up. Now press Ctrl I to invert the mask. Don't forget to right click on the hue layer and create a clipping mask. Switch over to the brush tool and simply paint around the edges of your subject. You can use a hard brush for the edges and gradually reduce harshness as you move inwards. Perfect. You really don't want to exaggerate this. You always want to keep the highlights really subtle, especially if the backlight isn't as strong. And similar to what we did with the volcano cloud, let's go ahead and create the hiker's shadow. To do that, I'm going to duplicate the hiker layer and then I'm going to rotate it and stretch it out. Place it right over here. Convert the layer to a smart object. Right click and choose blending options. Add a black color overlay. 
next let's go to filter and add a gaussian blur i'll set this to 8 and finally bring the shadow opacity down maybe to 40 percent or so cool apart from that naturally the hiker's image is also supposed to reflect on water so let's duplicate this image once again convert the duplicated image to smart object mirror it vertically once you move it to its proper position add a vector mask and simply erase the top part of the reflection to make it even more realistic let's add motion blur and finally reduce the opacity and there you have it looks good uh, let's clean things up a bit and group all these layers in one folder now the composition is pretty much done but i think it still looks flat so let's add some dodge and burn and if you don't know what that is dodging and burning is a technique you use to brighten certain highlights and darken certain shadows to give your scene a bit of dimension and to do that let's create two curve adjustment layers let's name one b for burn and the other d for dodge now let's go over to the dodge curve and lift it to brighten the image up press ctrl i to invert and now you can use the brush tool to paint around the highlights in our case it's mostly around the glow moving on to the burn layer bring the curve down to darken the image press ctrl i and this time i'm gonna use the brush to paint around the edges to create some sort of a vignette which adds shape and dimension to my image Great, I think everything fits nicely together now. I'm happy with the overall look. At this point, it's up to you in terms of how creative you wanna get. For instance, we can add some ashes falling down from the sky. To do that, create a new layer, set the color to bright gray. I've been using this brush bundle from Visuals of Julius for a while now, and I think I can use this snow brush to create the ashes. So let's go ahead with that and simply click once to add the ashes. To the scene i don't want this to be all over the place so let me create a vector mask and remove the ashes from the center and bottom as well and that's pretty much it i'd love to hear what you guys think about this piece i've also created an animated version out of this scene so if you'd like me to make a video about that do let me know in the comments below or simply give this video a like if you enjoy this content then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you drop an eye on my patreon page if you want to play around with the project files other than that thank you everyone once again for the huge support stay safe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace